Good morning from Foxy's Crocodile Bush Retreat. It is our 20th and final morning, Rex. Yeah. How, um, how are you feeling? We're very sad to leave. Mm. Uh, slept like a baby. Yeah. But uh, that bed sleeps. Sad to leave. Uh, the rain actually stopped. It's a beautiful morning. Beautiful, yeah. So it actually makes it harder to leave. Yeah. yeah if it was pouring down, it's a bit easier. <laughs> but it's a beautiful morning. Uh, we had a black like, coffee with a, a sunrise. Yeah, but we must go home sometime, eh? Mm. To the real world. To the real world. With the bottles. <laughs> so we are ready to go. Or, well, our stuff is ready to yeah. go. I don't know if we are ready to go. No, I think, don't think we'll ever be ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, let's leave this beautiful Burex. Let's leave this beautiful place. Hitch the trailer and then let's go. <laughs> We made it. We are back in Bloom. Now it's about three months later since our whole trip. Oh. I think he's got a little bit of a flu at the moment. So sorry for how his voice sounds. <laughs> are you feeling okay now? Better? Yeah, I'm gonna make it. Going Don't stress, I'm gonna make it. So we had quite a busy road on our way back, eh, Rex? Sure. It was really hectic. Luckily, our lane that was going to Bloemfontein was quite quiet. Yeah, because no one goes to Bloemfontein. <laughs> Just us. <laughs> but the cars coming, it was quite rough. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a lot, a lot of cars coming up. No, we had a, a two and a half kilometer queue at our last toll gate. Luckily, we weren't in it. It was the cars coming, like we said. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was a long road, but luckily we made it safe and sound. No issues, no trouble. And the rivers were very full. Yeah, sure. That's quite a sight. The rivers were so full. Every single river that we saw was chock and block full. Every river, every stream, every puddle. Yeah. Yo, no, it was beautiful. We also ended up um, seeing 209 birds. We saw a couple of birds on the way back that we didn't see in the Kruger as well on the road. Just, just out of Marlos, we saw the purple crested Taraka and the long crested Eagle. It was always pretty special to see them. And then actually we, we saw our first crow for the entire trip we didn't see mm. one crow in the entire park yeah from north to south we didn't see one crow which is quite strange yeah we saw the pied crow on our way back to Bloom. Yeah. one thing that we missed out on Rix this time that is still that I, is on my bucket list that i really want to see is a white lion and the kruger has white lions at the moment and we stayed in the area that these white lions are we stayed in their territory for a couple of nights and we didn't see them do they have white lines? I don't know. I think no. the people are faking it. <laughs> Just a simulation. <laughs> no, so no. if you ever want to see a white lion, go right before us or right after yeah. our trip. Because this happens every single time. For the past few years. No, what happens is usually as we, we uh, approach open or the area there, we usually see on Facebook or wherever Casper and his mates uh, or in, in the, the area, area right next to the camp even it makes us so excited yeah. literally right next to that little dam with the webcam yes everywhere we go there nothing the day after we leave there's casper <laughs> at back. open again he's literally a ghost he's, literally <laughs> he's a ghost to a us ghost. so if you want to see him just ask us when we're going go before <laughs> us or go after us yeah <laughs> then you know you'll see him at easy open. as that and um, one thing that wasn't a ghost for us was the spook. That's something that we don't see much when we go to the park. We hear him all the time and we are always on the hunt for him but never see him. And I must say this trip we had so many amazing sightings of yeah, the spook. That was pretty cool. The yeah. grey-headed bushrike. I think the base sighting was still was there by Moiplas. Yeah. And another thing about open Marula area. 
when we were checking in they warned us about the baboons and monkeys and i know that was also a big problem when we were at bergendal one year they tore our tent um got into our tent and so on and i must say this year we didn't have any there were some monkeys in the camp but they weren't really a problem once at marula yeah. and once at punda, punda yeah. and that's it those are the only monkeys that we have and we don't have any baboons in camp and usually that's a, that's a given if you go to any camp basically especially to the camping grounds so you'll see a yeah. you'll see a baboon but where we stayed no baboon whatsoever not one yeah and we spoke to our guides on the bushwalk and we asked them about this as well and they said it's probably because of all the rain and the bush that is so thick and full of food it's not necessary for them to come into camp and get food because they get enough food in the bush yeah it makes sense yeah and then um coming to the park in december i must say it is pretty busy in school holidays the park is busy yeah. like we don't enjoy traffic jams at all we try and avoid them we'll rather go and look for our own animal even if that means we don't end up seeing like all the big cats and so on in a day we would rather yeah. go and check for the birds and so on on quiet roads and avoid the traffic jams that's who we are that's what we enjoy to each his own though we would rather cause a traffic jam <laughs> we'll rather cause a traffic jam that's, like we did with the bergendal leopard that's much better yeah but that this is the only time that we can go to the kruger we are both teachers which means we can only go in school holidays. We cannot go any other time of the year. It would be great. I would love to go to the park when it is quiet. But majority of people go in that time because that's the only time that they can go to the park. We are just here to show you that you can enjoy it even if it is busy. Yeah. So we mentioned in our video that the only thing that we would change about Punda Maria is the bathroom situation. That the bathrooms are quite small for the campsite. No, just small. Nothing yeah. wrong with them. Just small. Small. But then somebody commented <laughs> in our video and told us, there's another bathroom, Ricky. Did you know this? I still don't know it. <laughs> so, um, we'll have to go check this bathroom out. We'll have to go back to Punda just to check out the bathroom to see if there is an extra one. <laughs> we will go check and we will tell you. So one thing that was quite hectic um, in the park this year um, probably with all the rain and all the water around was the insects there were a lot of insects at Tenze and Marilla every night there would be these tiny I don't know what they are but there's these tiny little insects and thousands of them would flock to your lights and then when we got to Bergendal the stink bugs which I think are worse than those tiny I don't know which one is worse though but this I can tell you which one <laughs> tastes <laughs> Yeah, we ate a few stink bugs while we had Bergenal. But we learned from one of our neighbors. They told us about these lights. That these days you don't buy white lights. You buy um, red or orange lights. And apparently the insects aren't attracted to them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, we can't seem to find any red or orange camping lights. Yeah, they are quite scarce. So if you know of these red and orange lights and you know where to get them, please comment down below where we can find some of these red and orange camping lights. Yeah, please, that will be uh, very nice. It will be a lifesaver. I do not want to eat another stink bug. <laughs> One thing that we did notice about the park this year is that the wild dogs numbers have increased. I don't know what conservation that the park is doing regarding the wild dogs, but it is really working. Big problem with the wild dogs were the tame dogs or the feral dogs in the area were always a problem. They would come into the park and transfer their sicknesses to the wild dogs and this would kill the wild dogs. So I don't know what the park is doing. But it's working. It's, do it's working. Sure. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. That's very cool. And then another thing's numbers that have gone up in the park is the yellow billed oxpeckers. We saw so many of them and it was the first time we've seen, the first time we saw yellow billed oxpeckers was on our honeymoon when we were at Nambiti Game Reserve. But we have never seen a yellow billed oxpecker anywhere else or in the park. And I think uh, we actually saw more yellow billed oxpeckers this time around than I agree. red billed oxpeckers. Yeah. I was speaking to my brother about the yellow billed oxpeckers and he used to work on a game farm in Hootspreit and they used to breed buffalo. They would breed TB free buffalo from TB buffalo, if that makes sense. But apparently a lot of these 
buffalo farm have shut down because they have realized that the buffalo that they breed are not totally clean from the TB virus and they have stopped obviously dipping in stuff to help with the insects and so on and his theory is this is why the yellow-billed oxpeckers numbers have increased dip is what used to kill the yellow-billed oxpeckers comment down below if you know the reason or if you agree with my brother that would be pretty cool to hear your opinion it uh, doesn't matter what the reason is it's, uh... It's amazing and then the other thing that is pretty sad is the rhino numbers and we actually ended up seeing quite a few rhinos not what we usually see in the park usually we see a lot more all the rhinos horns are cut off Eric's. yeah that was terrible so because that's not how it's supposed to be mm -mm. Um, otherwise I must go and change all my shirts and all my hats and I'll take the, the horn off there as well but yeah no every every single rhino that we saw was dehorned and then Rix, what was your favorite camp in the Kruger? We went from middle up and all the way down. We stayed at quite a few different camps. So which one was your favorite? I think that's probably the toughest question <laughs> to answer. But uh, with disregard for anything that we saw around the places, specifically focusing on the on the campsites. Okay. Actually, I think I have to go for for Tenze. We uh, we were very excited for Tenze and everything that we saw on, on online and it definitely delivered oh the night jaw that was special and my reaction when i saw the night jaw <laughs> yeah. was quite funny 10 day all in all was, was perfect yeah um, and we'll definitely go back again and yeah i know it's a rusty camp and uh, usually you have to take your solar and whatever with but if you're staying for one or two and maybe even three i think we can make it work for another three yeah. hours without any power because um, luckily, we can we can charge our our camera stuff in in the, the car, the batteries and sound in the car. Yeah, and that's, that's all we need. That's literally all we need. We just need our camera stuff, and you, that's it. You can go if if you really want to. You can go and buy ice for your cooler with your your meat every single day. You you can do yeah, this. Yeah, you can so, do it. So solar is brilliant, or any other power source is brilliant, but it's not needed. No, it's not a necessity. Um, and um, hint hint, we are going somewhere very soon. And we won't have power for eight days. And we're not taking my parents' solar. We are not taking the trailer. trailer. We don't have a deep freeze. So we are going to see how it works. So we'll tell you if you can camp at Tenze for longer without the power. Stay tuned for that announcement where we are going. Yeah, Stacey and yours. Where did you stay with Stacey? <laughs> where did you, uh, what, which camp did you enjoy the most? Yes, that's a really tough question. <gasps> it really is. Shocked. Um, I really enjoyed every part. Like Tenze was amazing, like we said, for all the little things that we saw. Absolutely love Punda. I don't know why that campsite is so nice. I think you are sitting there and the elephants just walk past and they are there at the watering hole and you are watching them drinking Amarula with the elephants in the background. It was just amazing. I wish we could stay for longer. I wish we stayed six nights at Punda. The bird life is absolutely stunning. So if you want to go bird, go to Punda. Yeah, I think really the next time we go, we'll, de we'll definitely go for at least a week. Yeah. And then another camp that I really enjoyed was Willyfunds. Really enjoyed Willyfunds. I think we've stayed at Balule before, but we stayed in the huts we didn't camp, which was really nice. It was really very nice. It was just hot because the Balulis uh, don't have any windows and the bugs were crazy so you couldn't leave the door open or anything so it was we also stayed there in December it was hot it was December the hottest. in a heat wave yeah. yeah I would like to go and camp at Balule because I enjoy the area I love the listening to yeah. the hippos in the evenings and so on but if you want to go to Balule in, in the middle of a heat wave be prepared to uh, to drive around looking like this um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was strange. <laughs> it was so hot, yo. And then Bergendal sightings were pretty cool. Early mornings, early early mornings, leopards, Bergendal. That's said enough. And then Rick's last but not least. You know, you technically still didn't answer the question. What was your favorite gun? Oh, it's just it's too difficult. Just I, I'll go back and I'll I'll go back, taste out all of them, and then I'll tell you. Okay. okay Again, so we I just need another try. Yeah. <sighs> just need another try <laughs> so we have to go back <laughs> I unfortunately that's too bad <laughs> but what was your favorite sighting that's also difficult because we had pretty spectacular sightings yeah I think uh, yes we had a lot of amazing sightings yeah, we were very blessed um, 
and probably on my list will be a lot of birds. Yeah. Um, I think the sighting of, of the of this work for the greater bush hike, the Mamoy Plaza, was spectacular. But, but the reason for this is because Rikas has literally been searching and hunting for that bird for years. Like, I think yeah. since 2018? 2016, 2016. Since, since we went to, uh, to Mozambique. You, you, you heard it the whole time, so we got so many good photos of, of it, yeah. so it was absolutely yeah, like, amazing. Yeah, and the Afrikaans name, the, the Spookful, literally translates to ghost bird, mm. because it's very, very elusive. Mm. Um, and you will hear it, but you won't see it a lot, so that was very special. Mm. And then, the, although I didn't get a, a pretty picture of the wattle eye, it was also pretty cool to see, because yeah. we, we, we went all the way up there to hopefully to find yeah. it. That was our main reason going up there. I think my favorite one was the, the leopard by Willy Funs because uh, we were waiting so long for a leopard sighting and it was in the road, in the rain. Yeah, it was a, it was a special sighting. Yeah, and, we were, and yours, besides yeah. the sight of me making coffee. <laughs> that was lovely. That was my favorite sighting on my birthday. Uh, when you made coffee, that was my favorite sighting of the trip. The best coffee of the trip. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but I, my favorite sighting, I think, has to be the 10 kilometers with the wild dogs. Yeah, that was that, amazing. That was sure. so special. Like, we got to know each wild dog personally. <laughs> we even gave the one a name, Spot was its name, because it had it was a young wild dog and it had so much character and it kept on getting frights of things and it was, it was just so playful and it was running down the road and it had this spot on its tail and it was just it was the sweetest dog and all these dogs just you got to know their personality in these 10 kilometers that we drove with them i must say i think that was that was really nice i think the other sighting that i really loved was our leopard in the morning at bergendal which one the <laughs> the one that crossed the road and then went and sat on the log next yeah, to the road that was pretty cool. and we watched the sun rise with this leopard yeah that was it was a special moment we spent so long with it and we were the only car for a long time as well we could just yeah it was it was really special but anyway so that's that our 20 day trip has come to end well technically three months ago <laughs> but yeah um this is the last that we'll post about our 20 day trip so yeah that's that that's the end but thank you to you guys for yeah. enjoying our trip with us. Thank you for commenting. Thank you yeah. for subscribing. Thank you for liking. We really appreciate every comment, every yeah. like, every subscription. Like we look so forward to seeing the new comments and replying and like um, building a relationship yeah. with the people that comment on every video. It's so like we love seeing, oh, this person commented again. It's so nice to see. Um, we really enjoy it. Yeah, we, we actually, we, we recognize the names, the names by now. Yeah, the people that comment on every video. So we really appreciate our you. our enormous community. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we hope to do some more trips. Um, we have one coming up in literally a week. Very excited for it. Just less than a week. We we'll say if it's a week, then we're gonna miss it. <laughs> Just less than a week, we are headed. We will make a little video for that, telling you guys where we are going. We are very yeah. excited. Hints: um, no electricity. Well, that's most of the country. <laughs> no electricity, no fences. Two hints. Once again, that's most of the country. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get it now. I was a bit delayed, yeah. but I get it. Not um, because of load shedding. Let's say that. No electricity, but not because of load shedding. Okay. Um, no fences, no electricity. No fence taken. No, no, <laughs> no fence taken. Because there's lame jokes aside, we will see you guys in the next vlog. Yeah. And so our next trip. Thank you. Keep on watching. Stay tuned. Stay with Stacy. Yeah. And then whoever this bloke is. <laughs> if you like the video, subscribe if you liked our 20 day trip subscribe we've got a few more trips planned for this year and the next one is starting soon the only thing that we can ask maybe is for uh, someone to sponsor us some diesel <laughs> because that uh, that might prevent us from going on the trips we can walk we'll walk there yeah so yeah if you know uh, where we're going or you think you know please comment down below we'd love to see where you think we are heading next but we'll keep you informed uh, and we'll, we'll see you on the road okay Bye. Cheers. Bye.